Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Don't go and talk about my father. God is my friend. He made this world for us to live in. And he gave us everything. And all he asks of us, listen, is we give each other love. Oh, yeah. Love your mother. Love your father. Love your sister. And love your brother. Your brother. Y'all know that song. We'll go and talk about my father. God is my friend. And he loves us whether or not we love him. And he forgive all our sins. You know what made me think about that song? Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, y'all. Thank you, Marvin, for those beautiful lyrics. And all he asks of us is we give each other love. And that seems to be the hardest thing to do. And I want to speak to my uh, black African Americans, whatever we calling ourselves. I want to speak to y'all more specifically because it would seem to me if everybody already think the worst of us every they take us for granted think we're stupid that we don't have feelings and this is collectively and these are non-black people it would seem to me that that would give us more and more reasons to draw closer together and to love on one another even harder. But we don't. And we've learned the same concept mentally of subjugation, oppression that was done to us. We do it to other members of our own race. Yeah, I said it. And you don't have to like it, but I said it. So... Let me just say, whatever side of the diaspora that you may be on, let me welcome you to Kay's Crawl. Y'all know what a crawl is? It's a hut where we can sit there. And I, I'm I'm pondering with that. The, the mental crawl, okay? Because, you know, crawl is just another name for house. You know, um, I think it's Swahili. It don't matter. I... I think it's real important that we have a conversation in house. We need to get to the bottom of our hatred and why we despise ourselves so much. Willie Lynch said it real elegantly, but y'all get mad when people repeat what Willie Lynch said. He said, if you would implement these components on these people, no matter if Willie Lynch is a fictitious or real person i could care less but if you was to implement all these components which were implemented on us then you're going to have a group of people that are perpetually miserable perpetually hate themselves and unless a phenomenon come on they're doomed and that's the black man and woman of america we hate each other we hate our kids we hate white people. I mean, we just all full of hatred. And every time I look at these killings, these accidental shootings, these shootings with stray bullets, these home uh, uh, invasions, all this type of stuff, it lets me further know how much we hate each other. But the biggest thing that rocks our boat and get us all up in arms. Even though the gayest place in America is the is the church on Sunday morning. 
is our disdain and our hatred for gay people, as transgender, and people that we uh, don't seem to understand. And it's the same way the white folk feel about us. Okay, because they don't understand us. They don't understand our moral ways, our our energy, our spirit. In fact, they kind of envy it. And so it, 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 it causes a deep resentment. So I want to know what our excuse is for coming down on transgenders and hating transgenders and gay people the way we do. You might hear me make comments about I don't think it's fair for transgender people to be involved in a women's sports. And I don't. I feel like if you were a transgender man, then I feel like it should be a league for y'all. Okay, and I'm not going I'm 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 10 toes down with that. However, I believe that you should be treated fairly. I'm not going to go around and hate you and try to risk harm to you. You another human being that I love. And personally, I wish you well. Whatever your transition and whatever your thoughts and desires may, I want for you what I want for myself. Happiness. Peace. And so anybody that's not like moving like that is a problem. In my opinion, in my humble opinion, people. In fact, I want to play something for y'all. And I, I was so touched by this. It made me cry uh, because I wish that I would have had a father. And I, I'm, I'm from a two-parent household. Let's just get it straight. I'm not a bastard kid. I'm I'm from a parent two parent household. My parents were married, and uh, my brother, my siblings, and I have the same mother and the same father. Okay, but I've never heard a man fight for his child's emotional state the way Dwayne Wade fought for it. Zaya, and I'm proud of him for that. And there's a lot of people that's going to come out, and a lot of people going to get them flack, and that's what they do. But a lot of them ain't got no father, and a lot of them were abandoned by their fathers, and their fathers didn't stand up for them, whether they was gay, straight, in between, or nothing. So for a man to stand up for his child, and love his child in spite of what other people say, man, I got to give you all the credit and all the props. Because we supposed to love each other. But we act like we want people to hate our their own kids because they gay. I've seen a, a pastor run after his kid and abuse him. Try to kick his butt on the streets. Chasing him down full-fledged because of his sexuality. And if that's not enough to make you think God ain't nowhere in it. You just a damn hypocrite, then that right there should tell you. God ain't nowhere in, I don't give a damn how much he preach on Sunday. I don't give a damn how much, how many members he got. He has, I'm sorry. He is not fit to represent humans in no capacity. And I want to thank Dwayne Wade for standing up for his son, his his daughter. I'm sorry, y'all forgive me. The courage that it took and it takes to stand up for Zaya. If Zaya is born from his loin. Why would he reject her? Why? Because she different? Um, I think it's important that we uh, we, we, we examine this. And, and let me play a little bit for you what Dwayne and Gabby had to say regarding their daughter. 
don't stand up here alone, as we know, it takes a village, it takes a community. We stand up here today as two people who have worked tirelessly, tirelessly to have resources and access. As two people willing to use our microphones for what we believe and what other families are going through. I'm attentional when I use my platform. I recognize what I've been given, and it is my job to uplift the voices of others and share my access and resources. I want to take this moment to publicly speak to our daughter, Zaya. Zaya, as your father, all I've wanted to do is get it right. I've sat back and watched how gracefully you've taken on the public, the public scrutiny. And even though it's not easy, I watched you walk out of that house every morning as yourself. I admire how you've handled the ignorance in our world. I admire it that you face every day. To say that your village is proud of you is an understatement. Thank you for showing me that there's more than just one way to communicate effectively. You taught me that communication with my mouth isn't enough. I have to also communicate with my two ears and my two eyes. As your father, my job isn't to create a, a version of myself or direct your future. My role is to be a facilitator to your hopes, your wishes, and your dreams. A lot of y'all don't understand that. Zaya, you've made me a better human just simply by being who you were born to be, our baby girl, Zaya Wade. So baby, thank you for showing the world what courage looks like. I'm proud that I was chosen to stand in place as your father. And thank you so much to the NAACP for this incredible honor. Thank you, Derek and the NAACP. It's, it's humbling to stand here surrounded by friends and heroes, OGs and icons, all working to advance the lives of black people and pay respect to an organization that has led us through over a century of relentless challenge, pain, triumph, and change. <clears throat> and now stands with us again at the foot of a very new era of activism. A new era that demands our collective answer to one simple question. Will we fight for some, or will we fight for all of our people? Let's just name a couple hard truths. First, the intersection of black rights and the rights of the LGBTQIA, trans and gender nonconforming people continues to be rough. That's a huge understatement. Even as we demand equality at the top of our lungs, we consistently fail to extend our advocacy to protect some of our most vulnerable among us. And, and second, black trans people are being targeted, terrorized, and hunted in this country. Every day, everywhere. And there's rarely a whisper about it. We honestly don't approach this work as, as, as activists or leaders as, as much as we do this as parents. Parents who love our children and will do, will do whatever the hell we can to, to, to keep them seen and secure and safe. This is a conversation worth having in ways that can actually build bridges, right? That don't fan the flames of hatred or division. That don't enable lawmakers or justice systems to look the other way when black trans people are under attack. They don't drive more young people to hate themselves or harm themselves. They don't cost people their lives. So we are humbled and we are hopeful for the future. 
I'm hopeful, we are hopeful that we may witness a real shift in the fight for justice. The moment, the movement makes room for everyone. Everyone. Thank you. I appreciate that. Because as black people, as I said, the most gayest place on, on, on any given day of the week is Sunday. And it's your church. And it's sad that people have to hide who they are and shrink in some instances because you are not comfortable. And you think it's some kind of agenda. Let me tell you something. If you're not gay and you don't want to be gay, nobody ain't going to make you gay. Okay? People that are gay, in my opinion, are born this way. They are born the way that they are. So for you to separate people, this is not anything new. Gay people have been on the planet since human beings been on the planet. How can you say we the first of everything else, but when it comes to, oh, homosexuality, then it becomes, oh, wait a minute. Oh, no, 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 no. No, 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 uh-uh. No, we weren't the first. No, no. Listen, everybody has their personal preference, but all I know is God requires us to love everybody, and especially our own. Especially. That's why the words say charity begins at home, and then it spreads abroad. It don't start in my white counterpart's house, who enslaved me, it start at my front door, my home. I had to clean the dirt and the stank out of there first and replace it with justice and love. And until we can do that, we ain't never going to hear from heaven. We ain't never going to be able to move ourselves out of our wretched condition. Because, like I said, from one oppressor to the next, it's like we our, nobody's oppression is worse than our own. And to be oppressed by your own, there's nothing like it. So some of y'all need to really check yourself and check y'all uh, conversation when it comes to people that same gender loving and, uh, you know, same sex relationship. Because really it's not none of your damn business. I wouldn't want to know what's going on in your bedroom. So why would you want to worry about what's going on in somebody else's? That is pure ignorance and sickness. What you eat don't make me shit. And what I eat don't make you. So with that being said, we got to learn how to replace indifference and hatred with love. It's the only thing that's going to move us out of this condition that we in. And we got to start with love for ourselves. If you got gay feelings you, you fighting, you got to deal with it. If you got gay people in your family that you resent for no reason other than they gay, you got to deal with that. Because you got issues. If you chasing your kids down the street and you want to beat your son up because he said he gay or tell your daughter she shouldn't be eating out nobody's boxes and what kind of woman is she. If you doing that kind of stuff. You ain't fit to be nobody's parent because you can't guide, you can't facilitate, and you certainly can't bring the best out of that offspring that you laid down and had brought life into the world. That's why a lot of y'all don't even deserve the privilege to mate because you trash thinking and then you bring in a trash into the world that you're going to spew all and vomit your hatred all over them. It's a learned behavior. Live and let live. 
I'm living, let die. All right, y'all. Y'all know what to do. If you like what you hear, please subscribe. Please share my channel. Please uh, donate to the channel or cash app the channel. I'm trying to get a camera. And I really would appreciate y'all continue to donate. Please continue to watch the commercials. And uh, let's move the channel forward. Let's move the channel forward. Let's have some real conversations. Okay? All right. And I'm going to see y'all in the next video.